Is this right? Is this? Okay. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Ascension Presents. So we kind of are continuing this little series we're doing for the National Eucharist Eucharist. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Ascension Presents. So we kind of are starting this kind of as maybe once a month, every so often series for the National Eucharistic Revival, which is, you know, going to be incredible these next three years. Um, the church is returning again and again to the reality of the greatest gift that God has ever given us. I mean, we, we know this, right? That the scripture, scripture here, here's the Bible in my lap, here's scripture. This is God's word given to us. So good. We know that the sacraments, all the sacraments, all seven, are God's work in the world. Um, but one of those sacraments, the Eucharist, aids God's very presence. It's God himself in the world, which is incredible. So the church is saying, okay, Catholics, uh, wake up to this reality. The whole world, wake up to this reality that Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, has given himself body, blood, soul, and divinity. He's truly present in the Eucharist at every single Mass. That's, he's truly present. So what happened is, in the previous video, we talked about how in John chapter 6, Jesus makes it absolutely clear that uh, when he says later on in Matthew, Mark, and Luke's Gospel, this is my body, in St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, when St. Paul is recounting at the Last Supper, when Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood, that, that this truly became his body, this truly became his blood, that the bread and wine became Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity. So we established this. Why? By looking at what? By looking at, A, the Lord's words, <laughs> this is my body. He didn't say this is like my body or this looks like my body or this is a symbol of my body, but also because of John chapter 6, where Jesus has the, what they call the bread of life discourse, where he makes it absolutely clear. He says, if you want to live forever, essentially, uh, if you want to eat the kingdom of heaven, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And again, remember the Jews murmured about this. And then, so Jesus did, he made it very clear. He wasn't talking figuratively or symbolically. He was speaking literally. And in John chapter six, beginning with verse 52 and then 53, Jesus reiterates again and again, amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life within you. My flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. He iterates that five times. So then after this, it says in verse 60, it says, then many of his disciples, this is the ne next teaching, then many of his disciples who are listening said, this saying is hard, who can accept it? Now, part of that is, is establishing or, or clarifying that they didn't interpret Jesus to be speaking symbolically or figuratively because it's not a hard saying for Jesus to say, hey, eat some bread and think of me. Drink some wine and think of me. Like, that's not a hard saying. It's a weird saying, but it's not a hard saying. The disciples who were listening said, remember, the disciples are different than the crowd. These are people who left everything to follow after Jesus. And they're saying that this teaching that Jesus is going to give them in us his flesh and blood, his body and blood, as food that we must eat to have eternal life, that's a hard saying. Jesus' response is, he asks the question, he says, does this shock you? Which I think the answer is, yes, quite shocking, Jesus. This is a very shocking teaching. He goes on to say, what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? Question we all ask, where was he before? Answer, heaven, right? Basically, Jesus is making it very clear. He's saying, okay, so I'm giving you this really hard teaching. It's a difficult teaching. I get it. But also, do you know who I am? This is really critical. Do you know that I am the one who made the stars, like all gajillion, hundred billion per solar system, right? Like all of them. I made all of them. I made everything. I can take some bread and some wine and transform it into my body and blood. So Jesus, just, I mean, he doubles down, triples down. He is not backing down. The next line, though, is one that Christians who don't accept this teaching is one they point to a lot. Jesus asked the question, does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where, to where he was before? And the next statement he says is, it is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. And a lot of times, you'll have Christians who are not Catholic who will point to that and say, see, Jesus is, is even saying, the Spirit gives life, the flesh is of no avail. The flesh is meaningless. The, the flesh is powerless. The flesh doesn't do anything. Now, it's important that we highlight this. Why does the Catholic Church for the last 2,000 years teach? And when Jesus says, it is the Spirit that gives life while the flesh is of no avail, why does the Church consistently for 2,000 years, 100% of Christians up till 500 years ago, said that that doesn't undercut what Jesus had just said? Why? Well, because there's a word for the flesh. 
Or is there a meaning of the term the flesh? St. Paul talks about the flesh. Um, St. John talks about the flesh. When Jesus here says that it is the spirit that gives life, but the, while the flesh is of no avail, Jesus says the flesh, meaning fallen human nature, is powerless, right? Fallen human nature is powerless to raise itself up because we need God's grace, absolutely. The spirit gives life while fallen human nature is of no avail. Absolutely, absolutely helpless without God's grace. Every time, previously, in John chapter 6, when Jesus is talking about flesh, he says, my flesh. So, my flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. Now, clearly, in John chapter 6, verse 63, where Jesus says, it is the spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail, there's a distinction between him saying, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood to have eternal life. My flesh is true food and the flesh, which is fallen human nature, being of no avail. Now, I hope that makes sense. Now, but it's not just this. It's not just um, the term my versus the term the. It's not just here is Jesus saying, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood and the flesh is of no avail. How do we know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is not saying that his flesh is of no avail? Well, because every Christian acknowledges what is it that saved us? What is it, that's con what, what is it that, that brought about the redemption of the world? It's the incarnation. What's the incarnation? The incarnate, right? Incarnate, Spanish, meat, the enfleshment, the enmeetment of God. And the fact that in his flesh, Jesus Christ lived, he suffered, he died, he rose in the flesh. Every Christian acknowledges it was that, it is that, that incarnation, Jesus taking on flesh, living, loving, healing, suffering, dying, and rising, ascending to heaven in that flesh, that's what gives us life. That's what gives us redemption. That's what saved us. So it would make no sense for Jesus to say, my flesh is of no avail because every Christian knows. Beginning, I mean, not beginning with, but all the way back to the first centuries, there's a guy named Tertullian. And he says this, he says, the flesh is the hinge of salvation. Not referring to the fallen human nature, but referring to the flesh of Christ is the hinge of salvation because it's his body, his blood, his soul, divinity given up for us on the cross, but also given up for us at the Last Supper and at every Mass that saves us. So, in response to our brothers and sisters who would look at that verse 63 in John chapter 6 and say, Jesus is undercutting, he's backpedaling by saying, it is the Spirit that, that gives life while the flesh is of no avail, we know. There's a difference between Jesus saying, my flesh, and him saying, the flesh. There's also, there's also this recognition that it is truly the flesh of Christ the body, blood, soul, divinity of Jesus Christ in the incarnation that has redeemed the world. Yeah, and that's what we get to receive at every Mass. That's, that's incredible. Anyway, for all of us here, this is Presents. My name is Father Mike. God bless.